locked in. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Happy 4th of July week, and welcome back to the Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast. That's right, folks, we are celebrating uh, Independence Day here in America. That's when we officially let the British know, nah, you ain't taking it no more, Jack. That's right. I was on Twitter, and I saw Charlotte Flair. She had a little post up on her Twitter, and I encourage everybody to check it out. There's a meme. And it has to do with Lex Luger. Do, do you remember the Lex Express? How many of you folks remember the Lex Express? Remember when he was in the WWE and he, he went on the Intrepid and he body slammed Yokozuna. And that was like a major moment in wrestling lore, right? He was able to body slam Yokozuna. Well, the meme on Charlotte Flair's Twitter account, quote, Remember this day in 1776 when Lex Luger slammed Yokozuna on the deck of the USS Intrepid and freed us all from British rule. Come on. (laughs) I mean, that's just ridiculous, hilarious, clever, you name it. So, of course, once again, you know, a WWE wrestler was able to save the day, folks, all right? That's why we celebrate Independence Day, because Lex Luger slammed Yokozuna. Don't quote me on that. That's right. Listen, welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, the show about pro wrestling and everything else. I am your illustrious host, The Duke. And you know, folks, I got to tell you, it's hot. I mean, it is burning hot out here in sunny Boston, Massachusetts. We're in the middle of a heat wave. I think it's been at least 90 degrees every day for over a week now, and there's no signs of it uh, slowing down, which is terrible for me because I like the cold, Jack. Okay, I like the cold. You give me some snow, you give me a little frost, I'm all about it because I'm a polar bear. Once the temperature starts getting uh, north of, let's say, 74 degrees, yeah, that's when I have some real problems there. So if anyone has any suggestions on how the Duke can stay cool during these hot weather days, please shoot me a message on Duke Loves Wrestling on Twitter or Facebook. Or you can go to the Duke Loves Wrestling email address, DukeLovesWrestling at gmail.com. During this episode, folks, I'm going to go over the top stories in the world of professional wrestling, a.k.a. Run the Ropes. I'm also going to preview Extreme Rules. Now, come on. I know you wrestling nerds out there. You're going to be like, come on, Duke. Why are you going to preview the pay-per-view when it's 10 days away? Because I can. And I understand that the card is subject to change, and that's okay. I'm still going to review this pay-per-view because I think the card is is stacked. I want to talk about a couple of things, and then if anything is added later, of course, we'll talk about that on a future episode. I'm also going to wrap up the show with something very serious, a topic about allegations of people abusing their power in pro wrestling, the uh, quote-unquote casting couch. Oh, yeah, strap yourselves in, folks, because the Duke has a lot to say. Uh, a little bit later. But before we get to any of that, listen, first and foremost, let me congratulate the man, okay? The man, Joey Chestnut, he just broke the world record by consuming, this guy was eating 74 hot dogs. That was during that uh, Nathan's hot dog eating contest. First of all, who the hell can eat seven hot dogs in one sitting, never mind 74? Can you imagine? 74 hot dogs? I mean, I don't want to be near any bathroom after this guy is done. Let me just say that right off the bat, okay? 74 hot dogs. The man is a machine. Jesus. But it's funny because it it brings up a major debate that's been going on since the beginning of time. I mean, I'm talking when, when you had Jesus and the folks there, they had to be debating about this thing, okay? And it's just as important as other debates that mean something to us. You remember the the classic debate, who's the better pro wrestler, Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan? You know, folks of my generation were still arguing about that. Of course, it's Ric Flair. Hulk Hogan couldn't shine his boots, but that's another story. Uh, 
who has the better finisher, Stone Cold Steve Austin with the Stone Cold Stunner, or what we know now is the RKO, a.k.a. the Diamond Cutter. You know, we have these debates, folks, okay? We have these things where it's like, what's better than the next? Well, the biggest debate this time of year, and any time of year when it has to do with barbecue foods, especially in America, is the hot dog a sandwich or not? Okay? Is a hot dog a sandwich? Come on. There's so many people that have an opinion on this thing. There's no way you don't have an opinion. Is it a sandwich or is it a completely, entirely different something or other? Which one is it? I'm going to put up a poll. We're going to get down to the bottom of this once and for all, folks. I want you to head over to the Duke Loves Wrestling Facebook page. I'm putting the poll up. I'm asking you, the wrestling crew, let me know what you think. Is the hot dog a sandwich? And I'm going to tell you right now, I have an opinion on this, okay? The hot dog absolutely is a sandwich. If you look at the definition for sandwich, we're talking about meat in between two slices of bread. End of discussion. End of discussion. The hot dog automatically has to be considered a sandwich for that reason alone, okay? And I know you over there, little Billy son of a gun, you're little well, well, Duke. Technically speaking, no, don't give me technically anything, okay? The hot dog is a sandwich. The Duke says so, Jack. All right? Let me tell you something. I had a hot dog that was delicious the other day, by the way. Sauerkraut, relish. You know, you you, you got to do the uh, stone mustard, okay? I like my little gray poupon. You got to do a little stone mustard on that sucker. A little bit of ketchup. I know some of you don't like to put ketchup on your hot dogs. I don't care. A little bit of ketchup on that, and you just enjoy it that way, Okay? And you know what else I like about the fact that the, the hot dog is, is, it literally is probably the best sandwich on the planet. You know why? Because you don't put mayo on hot dogs. Some of you weirdos out there, why do you put mayo on stuff? Can somebody explain to me why you put mayo on stuff? Don't you know it's disgusting? Did anyone ever tell you that? Mayo is literally the Roman reigns of condiments. It's useless. It's disgusting. It needs to get rid of the contract. Get out of this business and get out of my life, okay? I'm telling you, I can't stand mayo. I don't want any part of it. If you have mayo and you put it on anything that I'm eating, I'm getting up and I'm walking away from you. And I'll probably never talk to you again, okay? That's the Duke talking to you, Jack. That's right. Again, I'm going to put up the poll. Is the hot dog a sandwich? And you better say the right thing because you know, and I know that it is, okay? We know the hot dog is a sandwich. Delicious sandwich. That's right. And with that said, let's run the ropes. It's time to run the ropes. It's when I go over the top stories in the world of professional wrestling. Let's go. Guitar company Fender has signed a WWE superstar. Man, how cool is this? Okay, you have Elias, the WWE superstar. You know, he... Is always asking who wants to walk with Elias. He hits people over the head with the guitar. Really over the back, I should say. But he just signed with Fender Guitars. And folks, if you know anything about instruments, Fender is the number one guitar company in America. They're known for having quality products that sound amazing. So it's pretty cool for Elias to have this contract here with Fender. It's an exclusive deal. Wow. Wow. I'm sure somewhere, somewhere in the world right now, the honky-tonk man is pissed. And he probably should be because, you know, Elias is just an updated version of the guitar gimmick. I know Jeff Jarrett has done that gimmick before, but Elias has taken it to another level, Jack, and he actually can play pretty well. So, again, congratulations to Elias. Shout out to you. Of course, my good friend Vincent Kennedy McMahon. I'm sure he had something to do with this Fender deal. The strength of of his name is enough for a major company like Fender to want to do business. So congratulations all involved. Ric Flair going in for surgery. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you folks, our friend, my hero, the nature boy Ric Flair. This guy has some procedure coming up on the 9th of July. I know if everyone remembers, last year he had some health complications. We actually almost lost Rick, to be honest with you. So thank goodness that didn't happen because, boy, has he bounced back. 
I mean, this guy is more popular today than ever before in his life. Ever before. Okay, he's in rap videos. He's walking around doing his speeches and his promos. I mean, this guy's just living life on another level right now. Plus, his daughter Charlotte is doing so well. I'm sure that helps a lot. But uh, Flair is going in on July 9th. It's going to be some kind of surgery having to do with uh, his abdominal wall. I don't know. Some of these words here. Ellis elistomy or whatever and i know some of you medical folks are like come on duke you should be able to pronounce that better than that well sorry i can't okay i tried that's what happens there nonetheless shout out to my man rick flair and also his lovely fiance wendy listen i'll tell you something about wendy she was fifi the french maid back in wcw and this lady you know her and flair they lost touch with each other for years they managed to reconnect now they're together engaged to be married this woman stays by her man's side i mean she has really been a rock at a time where rick has needed it more than ever before in his life it's interesting because rick is the kind of guy that gives so much to so many people it's great to see somebody else take care of him especially in such a major time of need i mean we know that flair has his, his children david and megan and, and charlotte you know we understand that. Even Conrad, who's engaged to Megan, which is pretty cool. Flair has plenty of friends and what have you. But when you're the person that's always taking care of other people, sometimes you can be taken for granted. Sometimes people don't believe, even when they see you sick. They don't believe that you're really sick. Like, oh, he'll pull through. He'll be fine. No, man, that Wendy, she is taking care of Rick. And it is just really, really cool to see. And we thank you, Wendy. Rick, we hope you feel well, brother. Take your time, rest up. There's more rap videos that we need you in. So come on, man. Do the right thing. Listen to what the doctors have to tell you so you can get back to nature. That's right. Shinsuke Nakamura to be out of action for two weeks. Ugh. Folks, this story just keeps getting worse and worse. I told you last week that Shinsuke, in fact, it was last Monday when he was at a WWE live event. And he was bitten by a police dog by accident. I And you know those police dogs. They're attack dogs, man. They're, they're not anything to play with. You don't want to get bitten by one of those suckers. So Shinsuke got bitten. I believe it was on the leg. And unfortunately, that has kept him out of action since then. Although he did make an appearance when they were in Osaka, Japan over the weekend. WWE was over there. Shinsuke had crutches. And he was attacked. And then AJ Styles came and, and made the save, which was pretty interesting. But nonetheless, you know, I hope he makes it to the pay-per-view coming up because that would be really nice to see. It's such a freak accident, such a, a crazy thing to happen. And again, Shinsuke, listen to the Duke. Listen to the Duke, Shinsuke. I want you to sue the pants off of everybody involved. I want you to sue the city, the venue, the police department, which is still technically the city. I want you to sue everybody because this is ridiculous. Ridiculous that you got bitten by that police dog and it has cost you portions of your career man this is ridiculous so get well shinsuke can't wait to see you back in the ring again king of strong style breaking news team hell no reunites that's right folks we're talking about kane and daniel bryan they reunited last week on smackdown and this past week they came together to take on the Usos. Can you believe this? The Usos, which is, you know, quite frankly, the top tag team on the planet right now. That right there, folks, is a match made in heaven. I mean, you're, you're literally talking about four future Hall of Famers right there battling, battling it out in the ring there. And, and the Usos, don't sleep on them, folks. They're a fantastic team. Still, still a fantastic team. And I just hope that... This is the beginning of a long feud. Let's keep Brian and Kane together. I know eventually they're going to have to split them up, especially considering the fact that Kane is running for mayor out there where he lives in Tennessee. So eventually he's going to have to go. I think he's going to win that race, to be honest with you folks. So eventually he's going to have to go. But at least through SummerSlam, let's let's keep this Team Hell No thing going and let's have them battle the Usos. That would be nice. Nonetheless, Team Hell No is going to the pay-per-view extreme rules and we're going to be talking about that a little later so that's 
Pretty cool to see. A little nostalgia. A little nostalgia for you there. That's right. The number one story in the world of professional wrestling is... Bray Wyatt in a car accident. Ugh. Jeez. Bray Wyatt, a.k.a. the Eater of Worlds, a.k.a. what is he, the Raw, one half of the Raw Tag Team Champion? Well, got himself into a little bit of car accident there, folks, and it was not so little. It was actually pretty bad. Three cars involved, and Bray hit a car head-on, which caused that car then to hit somebody else. Can you believe this? Yuck. Now, the good news about this is no one was uh, significantly hurt Although Bray, he did sustain some kind of head injury that was not so good there. He actually doesn't even remember too much of what happened. But he's being cited by the local police, which, you know, that lets you know, is, at least in their view, it was his fault. Listen, I don't know if he was under the influence. We don't see any reports that state that. Maybe he was just tired or what have you. Uh, they say that he was distracted which means he could have been on his phone or messing around trying to play his music. You know, maybe he's trying to play the new Drake album, which is pretty awesome, by the way, Scorpion Season. Uh, look, folks, please be careful out there. The last thing you want is to be responsible for somebody getting hurt on the road because you're over here checking your Facebook or checking Instagram or doing those little silly videos while you're driving and all that nonsense. Just please be careful out there, folks. Be because, you, you know, you don't want to be responsible for taking a life which could change your life. You could be in jail, you know. Bray, I hope you mend up and you get well, brother. Wishing you the best. But seriously, hopefully this is like a come to Jesus moment, no pun intended, where you realize you got to focus when you're on that road, man. You guys are beat up. You're tired, what have you. I get it. Maybe it's time to hire a driver, and that's something that the WWE needs to invest in, especially since they got that... Those two big deals, $2 billion. I'm sure they got a couple extra bucks to help you guys with drivers or something like that. Because this is, we can't afford to have uh, you guys be put in a position where somebody could get significantly hurt. Both you and other members of the public. No thanks. No thanks. Vincent Kennedy McMahon, my good friend. I know you're listening. Do the right thing. Help these guys out. All right? And that does it for Run the Ropes. Listen, folks. Head over to f Twitter. Head over to Facebook. Type in Duke Loves Ross and let me know. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm a jerk? Maybe something in between. It's okay. Tough skin. I can handle it. Even though I'm sweating like crazy again, it is hot. It is so hot. Ugh. It's unnecessary to be this hot. Give me a break. Up next, I am going to preview Extreme Rules. Be right back. This is Alexa. And this is Brianna. And we're Sugar and, and, we're Spice. Sugar and Spice. And you're listening to Duke, Duke Love Wrestling. Wrestling. All right, we have WWE Extreme Rules. It's coming up hot and heavy, folks, all right? We're talking about July 15th, 2018 from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's live on the WWE Network as well. It's a pretty stacked car, which is why I want to go over it this week. And as I said before, if anything gets added to this, anything, we'll come back. It's okay. We'll talk about those matches too. You know the Duke is not going to leave you hanging, baby. Come on. That's right. Let's start off with Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Look at this Baron Corbin, huh? This guy. First of all, he's a former uh, NFL player, which is pretty cool. But this guy, he had that long, nasty, stringy hair, even though his hairline was receding like crazy. It was running away from his head. So he finally decides to buzz it. And in my opinion, it looks much better, okay? I know some of you don't like it. I like it. I think the man looks more reasonable. He has the facial hair. He has the buzz cut. Baron Corbin, good job. Nonetheless, you're going to lose to Finn Balor. And you're going to lose to Finn Balor because Finn Balor is your daddy. That's right. Finn Balor is one of the top superstars in the world of professional wrestling in general. And unfortunately, because of injury, his momentum stopped about a year and a half. But I'm telling you right now, folks, mark my words. Finn is building back up to where he needs to be because the guy can go. And in this match, I think he's going to make short work of Baron Corbin. The only thing that could save Corbin is if he cheats. Now, if he cheats to win, I'm okay with that because you can extend the feud. 
But I think Corbin's going to get a, a pro wrestling lesson of a lifetime and hopefully learn something in this match. So I can't wait to see it. My pick is Finn Balor to defeat Baron Corbin. And let's get Finn Balor back in, the, in some kind of title picture. I mean, I'm sick and tired of this guy not competing for a title. I think we need to get a belt around his waist. Let's go. He and the club, they could be running roughshod all over the WWE. Let's go with the faction. I want the club. I want Finn Balor. And I want it now. Now. Okay? Now. That's right. Jeff Hardy, the United States champion, going up against Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know if this match is in jeopardy, folks, given the injury to Shinsuke. I can tell you, though, I don't see Shinsuke winning because of that injury. It just, he, he's probably going to need more time, even if he competes in this match. He's going to need more time to heal up because that was such a significant injury. So expect Jeff Hardy to beat Nakamura again because of the injury. Who knows how good this match is even going to be. It will be a tough one, okay? Jeff Hardy is a, is not a heel. He's actually a babyface. Shinsuke being injured, that automatically gives him sympathy. This could be a recipe for disaster. They're probably going to have to do some kind of switcheroo here. But we'll see. We'll see what happens there, folks. But again, Jeff Hardy, you think he's going to retain the United States Championship. Shinsuke, again, please get well. Roman Reigns, the biggest punk in the world, going up against Bobby Lashley. Let me tell you something, Bobby Lashley. You, sir, are not entertaining at all, especially when you're on the mic. It is just terrible. The, the best part about you, Bobby Lashley, is that you look like a million bucks. Unfortunately, once that bell rings, you don't even look like a, a, a hundred pennies. Like, you just, ah, it's terrible. It's terrible, Bobby. Bobby, 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 Bobby. It's terrible, okay? I'm going to tell you that. And I don't mean to hurt your feelings, Bobby. I know you're a big muscle-up guy. I know you're a sensitive guy. I just don't like it, okay? And Roman Reigns, you're a punk. I can't stand you. You already know that. I hope Bobby Lashley makes short work of you. I don't want either one of you in the match because I don't, I just, ugh, whatever. But I hope Bobby Lashley hurts you, Roman. I hope he beats your face in. I hope he does to you what you do to me every time I see you on the ring, Okay? Every time I see you in the ring, Roman, it hurts my soul. So I want Bobby Lashley to hurt your body so you can feel the pain that I feel, Roman, when I see your ugly face on TV, okay? And I don't care how many Roman Reigns fans out there send me negative messages. You all keep doing it. Haven Reign, Frank's wife Sue, Caitlin, all of you. You send me these, these messages about Roman Reigns. Duke. Why are you messing with our friend Roman? Beatrice, why are you messing with Roman? Let me tell you something. I don't like him. I don't like his face. I don't like his name. I don't like anything about this guy. Okay? I hope Bobby Lashley destroys him. It's as simple as that. That's right. Dolph Ziggler, the Intercontinental Champion, defends his championship against Seth Rollins and get this. A 30-minute Iron Man match. Woo! This is going to be a classic, folks. I'm telling you right now. This will be a great match because Dolph Ziggler is going to carry that punk Seth Rollins. And my only hope is that Seth Rollins doesn't do something ridiculous to injure Dolph Ziggler. Which we know Seth Rollins, he, he's Mr. Injury Guy. He'll do something foolish to hurt somebody out there. But I, and, and he has 30 minutes to do it, so God knows what's going to happen. But I hope Dolph Ziggler wipes the mat with this guy, okay? I hope he wipes the mat with Seth Rollins. I, if there's one guy that I almost can't stand as much as I can't stand Roman Reigns, it's Seth Rollins. You guys keep pumping him up like he's so great. No, he's not the next Shawn Michaels. No, he's not the next anything. He's, he's just, yuck. Again, with that, yuck. Dolph Ziggler, on the other hand, should be champion. He should be world champion. I love Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler is pound for pound the baddest ass on the planet right now in that ring. Okay? Simple as that. If if Dolph Ziggler is going up against Brock Lesnar, I think my money's going to be on Dolph Ziggler. I know some of you are thinking I'm crazy here, but Dolph Ziggler is a shooter, Jack. He can get it done. He can get it done. So, I expect Dolph Ziggler to destroy Seth Rollins. And he's going to do it for the Duke because the Duke says so. That's right. Team Hell No takes on the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Bludgeon Brothers. 
I would love to see Team Hell No win this match and get the championship so then they can defend it against the Usos at a later date. With that said, the Bludgeon Brothers are on a little bit of a roll here and they need the championships more than Team Hell No does. So, I expect the Bludgeon Brothers to retain the championship. It just doesn't make any sense to take the belts off of them right now. Don't kill the momentum. Team Hell No doesn't need the belt. The Usos don't need the belts. So just keep things as is. But uh, it, I expect this to be a good match. Bludgeon Brothers are going to go out on top, though. Carmella, the SmackDown Women's Champion, and my good friend Paul's little baby girl, going up against Oscar. Listen, James Ellsworth is back. He's helping Carmella out. You know he's going to interfere in this match. Nonetheless, nobody is ready for Oscar. I expect Oscar to win this match. I expect her to be the SmackDown Women's Champion, and I expect her to reign supreme for a long period of time here, folks. The only thing that would make sense is if Ellsworth interferes in this match, which causes them to push out till SummerSlam, which is in August, when Oscar can win then. I will be okay with that. But we got to get the belt on Oscar soon because it just doesn't make sense for her not to have a championship right now. She's too damn good. There are too many other matches that could happen. I understand that Carmella has been doing a good job as champion. She's a heater. But it's time for her to lose that championship and start chasing again. That's just my opinion. That's right. Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. These are the Raw Tag Team Champions going up against the B Team. A.K.A. Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. I don't know what's going to happen because Bray Wyatt has that head injury. Who knows if he's going to be able to defend his half of the championship at the pay-per-view. Jeez, these injuries, man. This is terrible. And it's interesting because Bo Dallas is Bray Wyatt's brother. It's very interesting. In fact, it's it's funny. When you saw on Raw, Bo Dallas was making fun of Bray Wyatt. And he put on a fake beard and everything. He actually looked exactly like Bray Wyatt. And it's like, well, they're brothers. Of course they look alike. That's right. But I expect the B team to win. I think it's it's time to get the belts off of Hardy and Wyatt because Wyatt just can't compete. So wheel them out there. Let Hardy stay in the match the whole time. And let's get those championships off those guys immediately. That's right. AJ Styles, WWE World Champion, going up against Rusev Day. Man... I, people are going to say I'm crazy for saying this. I want Rusev to win the championship. I want Rusev to beat AJ Styles, and I'm okay if, if AJ wins it back at SummerSlam, but damn it, I really like Rusev. Get that belt on that guy. The fan, Do you understand the pop that we would see if Rusev wins the championship? Do you understand how crazy the fans would go over that? I mean, come on. Does AJ really need a championship right now? He could lose it right now and win it back. It's okay. Give the belt to Rusev Day. That's right. Please, do it for me. Do it for the Duke. All right, the main event. We're talking about my girl, the MVP of the WWE. Five Feet of Fury, Alexa Bliss, a.k.a. the WWE Raw Women's Champion. Going up against former champion Nia Jax. And this is an extreme rules match. So you know anything goes. Of course, Mickey James is going to interfere. Expect Ronda Rousey to somehow get involved. I expect Alexa Bliss to retain the championship. So she and Ronda Rousey can battle it out at SummerSlam. Which would be fantastic. That would be a great match. Could potentially be a main event match. Probably should be. Uh, Nia... Put her in a feud against somebody else. I just I don't need to see her with the championship again right now. It's not time. Alexa Bliss is the heater. She's somebody who is hot. She's great at making fun of people. So somebody like Ronda Rousey, who is so popular, she's a, she's a solid baby face. She can chase Alexa Bliss. She should. So let's see what happens with that. All right, but my money is on Alexa Bliss beating Nia Jax to retain the WWE Raw Women's Championship. And that does it for my Extreme Rules preview. Okay? 
You can head over to Facebook, Twitter, type in Duke Loves Wrestling. Let me know what you think of that. Up next, folks, I told you there is a topic that I'm going to go over, a very serious topic. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, this is Rudy Russo, and you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. How do you like them, Montana? All right, folks, we're back here, and as I told you, I got a very serious topic I want to touch base on. You know, here at Duke Loves Wrestling, I don't shy away. I do not shy away from talking about serious stuff here, okay? We have covered everything from PTSD, drug addiction, LGBTQ issues. We've covered, jeez, the whole uh, thing with Paige and the, and the sex tapes being leaked. We've covered it all, folks, okay? And, and there is a serious topic that just became public, and it has to do with allegations that Jay Lethal while with Ring of Honor, he utilized his position to try to force Taylor Hendricks into fooling around with him. And because she didn't, allegedly, he stopped her push. So everything from Taylor uh, competing in the May Young Classic for the WWE and other opportunities, this is what she alleges. All that stuff got stopped because Jay Lethal was upset with her for not sleeping with him. Let me say this, folks. And, and, you know, we've covered a lot of this stuff before. I told you. This is America. Everyone is innocent until proven guilty. If you believe in the Constitution, we're talking about Fourth of July weekend here. If you believe in the Constitution, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Okay. And at this point, it has not been proven that Jay Lethal is guilty. It's just an allegation. With that said, it is not unheard of. It is not hard to believe that someone would use their position to try to take advantage of somebody else. And I'm not saying that that's what Jay Lethal did. So please, all you Jay Lethal fans, don't start the nonsense with the Duke. Oh my God, I can't believe you said that, Duke. How dare you? Hey, 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 hey. Stop it, okay? Everything that I know about Jay Lethal, and I hear from f- very close friends of his and, and people who have competed against him, they all say he's a great guy. And the way that he's presented himself, he's a great guy, as far as I can see, okay? But Miss Hendricks is pretty fantastic in her own right. And I've never heard anything negative about her, although I know some of you are probably going to start sharing that crap now. That's unfortunate. You ever notice the the character assassination that starts when somebody throws out an allegation like this, especially when it's a woman and she talks about something that she has potentially gone through as it relates to sexual harassment or even something deeper than that. Let's say it's sexual assault, which is not the case here so far. But, you know, harassment at the very least. You ever notice how many people line up to try to assassinate her character? It's unfortunate. And it's a a problem that we have worldwide. But we're talking here in America. It's really unfortunate. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. What I do know is Taylor Hendricks has obtained legal counsel. She is pursuing this thing. She's very serious about it. So it's going to play out and, you know, we'll be tracking it. But I want to say this. Again, I, I know folks who are close with Jay Lethal and they don't believe this stuff is true and they're, they're sticking by their guy and supporting him. And, and you know something? That's fantastic. I would hope that if there's allegations against me, especially that are not true, I would hope that my friends would stick by me and not jump to conclusions as well. So I, I respect that. Okay, and I got nothing to say to Jay Lethal's friends outside of that. I respect what you're doing. Stand by your guy. But some of you so-called fans out there, you need to have a seat. Okay? Several seats. You don't know these people. Let's be honest. Yeah, I said these people. It's okay. You don't know these people. 
you don't know what kind of person these wrestlers and performers really are. Come on. You know the character. You may have heard them on the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast do an interview. You may have read them on WrestleZone or Wrestling Inc. or one of these fantastic websites there, Rumbling Rumors or what have you. You may have, you know, you think you know them, but you don't. So it's disgusting to see these so-called fans tripping over themselves to defend. In the case of Jay Lethal, you got people, oh, she's wrong, she's a this, she's a that, she's a but. Hey, what are you talking about? You don't know Taylor Hendricks. You don't know Jay Lethal. What are you talking about? Are you really going to say that you know what happened between those two? Stop it. It's ridiculous. It's ignorant. It's disgraceful. You're going to go out of your way to assassinate her character and talk down about her when you don't even know what the truth is. And it's likely that the truth is somewhere in the middle. Okay? What are the facts? What's that, the facts? Jay Lethal dated AJ Lee. He trained her too. I believe he trained her, and then they started dating. Those are the facts. I'm talking about two people working together. Lethal in a position of authority. He's training her. And they start dating. So that's that's two adults mutually deciding that they want to spend time with each other. And that's all right. What happens if there was a pursuit? I'm just throwing it out there, folks. I'm not saying this did happen. What happens if he tried to pursue Taylor and she said no? What happens if after that, she felt that she started losing, missing out on opportunities and instead of taking a look at whatever quality of work she's putting out there, she wants somebody to blame. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just throwing something out there. What happens if this guy really did kill her opportunities because he he wanted to get revenge? Because she wouldn't do what he wanted her to do. I'm just throwing it out there, folks. We don't know what happened. But these are real life situations that do happen in every industry. I don't care if you're a mailman. I don't care if you're in the military. I don't care if you're in radio. It doesn't matter. These things, the, the, the quote unquote casting couch, it happens. It happens to men. It happens to women. There are men. There are women who do this to people. It's not unheard of. So I I circle back. I'm talking to you so-called fans. For you to sit there and try to assassinate the character of this young lady and act as if you know for sure that there's no possible way that Lethal could have done any of what he's being accused of. Have a seat. What are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. Flip side. For anybody who's jumping up and down trying to trip over themselves to go after Jay Lethal, a guy who up until this point, and I did my research, I haven't seen anything that even slightly suggests that Jay Lethal has been accused of this stuff before. You're not going to go out there and assassinate his character. Jay Lethal? Been in the business like 20 years, training people. He's been in all different types of organizations. He's wrestled all over the world. He's won championships, which means promotions trust in him he's trained plenty of females you're not gonna assassinate that guy's character when we don't know the full truth he's innocent until proven guilty this is america and some of you out there are so cynical that all it takes is an allegation for you to want to jump down somebody's throat and for you want to pile on and talk about how guilty and how wrong and etc etc it's disgusting it's disgraceful stop it It's okay to lay back a little bit. Let's let this thing play out. Let's pay attention to the facts and see what happens. That's okay. It's called an investigation. We don't need to rush. Let's get it right, okay? Because if this guy is what he's being accused of being, then you know what? I hope he is punished in a manner that makes sense, okay? Because he shouldn't be doing what he what he's accused of being doing. But if that's not the case, and this is all made up, and this is sour grapes, then I hope she is punished. Okay? Because you don't sit there and try to ruin somebody's life, ruin their livelihood, their career. You just don't do that. 
And I know that I just pissed off everybody on every side of this issue. And and like I said, I told you last week, it's not that I don't care. I actually do care. Let me know. Tell me how you feel about that. And I'll defend my position all the way. I'm not going to sit here and assassinate either one of their characters just because I want to jump to conclusions or because I have a, a built-in bias where I want to believe when somebody says that something happened to them or that I want to believe that it couldn't possibly be true because so-and-so is a good guy. There's plenty of good guys out there. There's plenty of good ladies out there. That doesn't mean they don't do some effed up stuff. And let's face it, folks, none of us are perfect. We all have our moments in life that we wish we could take back. When I was a kid, I asked my mom if I could I could have some of her box of chocolates. She said no. When she wasn't around, I went into the box of chocolates and I ate half of each piece. So I left something in there, but I ate half of each piece. I wish I could take that back. That was a terrible thing I did there as a kid. And boy, she let me have it after that. Let me tell you something, Jack. That was, oof, oof, that was bad. I don't mean to make light, but my point remains here folks we don't know what happened let's let's take our time let's investigate this deal here let's let the facts play out we have lawyers involved so the facts are going to come out and that's okay but this ridiculous notion that you know the character and the heart of Jay Lethal you know Taylor Hendricks and, and you know that she's telling the truth or that she's lying or what have you stop that crap just cut it out man stop it Unless you know those folks intimately, you don't know anything. And even if you are friends with them, you probably still don't know what you think you know. It's amazing how people who we thought we knew so well, it's amazing how they can do things and it's just like, damn, I didn't see, I didn't see that one coming. For either party. Innocent until proven guilty. But brother, whew, if you're guilty, whew. And sister, if you're guilty, you're trying to ruin this guy's life, whew, I'll tell you, I'm going to talk about it. That's one thing you folks can count on. The Duke will revisit this topic. And listen, both parties are more than welcome to come on the Duke Loves Rousing podcast and express how they feel. Tell us your truth. Hopefully it is the truth, but at least tell us your truth. And we can figure it out from there. I'm cool with that. Folks, next week, I'm going to be going back into the secret location. I got some new equipment. Oh, my God. Wait until you hear the new equipment. It's going to be something off the wall. Can't wait. Also, have some great guests coming up. Listen, be kind to yourselves and to others, okay? Head over to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Go to iTunes. Give us a five-star review there. Duke loves wrestling. That's R-A-S-S-L-I-N. That's right. I need to go get myself a Richie's slush so I can cool off. It's hot. It's hot. That's right. All right. I'm going to have the Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty, take us away. Folks, bye-bye, everybody. Hey, this is the Duke of Dorchester. The one, the only, the man... Oh, the hour. Yeah. Can you handle that, baby? I want to tell you this. You've been listening to Duke Loves Wrestling.